I'm here with Julian Cowanhill to talk about his work with tinnitus and the central nervous system. Um, Julian, you've had a lot of success with hundreds of clients, and I'm really wanting to bring hope to the tinnitus community, where at the moment there is none, not in the medical community, not on the boards. Um, so this is an important video, I feel. So thank you for taking part in this today. Um, in your book, you you talk about letting go of tinnitus. And people often, when they first get tinnitus, um, get angry at habituation, the word habituation. And if you could talk a little bit about your definition of letting go of tinnitus. Yeah, when, when you get support, and human beings are incredibly relational beings, all our wounding and our biggest trauma happens in relationship. So when you get support, supportive therapeutic help from another person, this can help your central nervous system switch off, stop feeling threatened, afraid, and under attack and frightened, and start to come out of this fight or flight response, which is so central to tinnitus. And the more you come out of this fight or flight response, the more you can start to let go. And by letting go, what I mean is that instead of reacting very angrily in, in this ultra-sensitized, hot, fiery state, as your nervous system settles, then your perceptions and the hypersensitivity of your perceptions settle. And so it becomes easier to switch off. You stop listening out so acutely. Therefore, the sensitivity that leads to tinnitus starts to soften, quieten, and back down. And the, the better you feel, and the more you, you are not monitoring your tinnitus, you literally start letting go of the tinnitus, and the tinnitus starts letting go of you. And so when this happens, the perception of tinnitus really starts to quieten down, and you can focus your mind on other things and genuinely let go of tinnitus. So it's no longer in your awareness, and you're no longer reacting to it and you move into a period of forgetting about it, and then sometimes you can find it again, oh gosh, where's my tinnitus? I haven't thought about it all day. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's interesting. And when you get into that period of forgetting about it, in my experience, the, the sound of it, the actual perception of it, backs off. Now, habituation is something else. This is when you just get completely used to this wretched thing called tinnitus. It's bugging you, you've had it for a certain amount of time. Here we go again, this, uh, this, uh, this annoying sound that's there. But you go into this sort of phase of, God, it's the same old, same old. Oh, here we go again. Huh. And when you do this for days and weeks and months, eventually you can get into this state where it's become such a habit that you no longer react to it so much. It becomes like a part of the furniture. Or a better analogy, it's like a smelly old tramp that's moved into your home. You don't want him there, but you kind of, you really get used to him being there. Um, and after a while, you just start getting on with your everyday life. And there's a part of you that, dare I say it, accepts the tinnitus is here. You're no longer fighting it, you're no longer resisting it, you're no longer seeing it as an enemy, you're just getting used to it and you're kind of learning to wear it a bit better. So would you say habituation is the first step to this um, so-called fade in perception? Yes, I think it's a really positive landmark along the way to getting better. And if, you, if, you, if nothing terrible happens and if you just poddle along with your tinnitus, and you don't do terribly much about it, it is very likely you'll habituate. And when you habituate, you'll just get used to it a bit. It'll become a bit of a habit. And because of it, you're not going to react so acutely to it. And you're not going to be regarding it as this monstrous, terrifying threat. It's just going to be the same old irritation. So that gets a little bit more palatable, a bit more digestible. Um, and because of that, your adrenal levels drop, you feel a little bit safer, and so your perceptions stop 
being so acute and red hot, listening out for tinnitus, some things start to settle as you get used to it. And you can almost go into, oh God, so what? <sighs> anyway, I'm going to get on with the rest of my life. That is a very important phase for many people because very often the symptoms get better, get a little bit better. And this is what health practitioners all over the world need to be telling people with tinnitus. It's so important, this, and thank you for asking about it. If nothing terrible happens, you're very likely to habituate at some stage and it'll probably get a little bit better. You know, the symptoms will become a little bit less invasive or a bit more manageable. You'll feel a bit more spacious. It's not right in your face. Or the perception of it starts to pipe down. And for many people, this is a major experience because they start to realise that tinnitus isn't fixed at all. It's a very changeable feast <laughs> and that actually it can get a bit better. So, so where would you go from the phase of habituation where somebody might hear it if they look out for it at the same level mm -hmm. as it possibly could have started mm -hmm. to it fading? Okay. How do you get to that? You need to work on yourself. You need to get help. You need to get your central nervous system to feel safe. And I'm not talking about some flaky, airy-fairy notion here. I'm talking about immediate experience. So the classic tinnitus person is, oh my God, oh, is this ever going to go? Oh my God, I'm going to live this for the rest of my life. That person had the most awful experience with it. And all this negative stuff. It's like going to a, a theatre of horror and hanging out in that theatre the whole time. If you stay in that mode with all these really powerful thoughts and negative messages knocking about like cannonballs in your nervous system, it's going to be quite hard to, to get better quickly. If you can kind of get somebody to get your nervous system to switch off, so a lot of, find any good body-based practitioner, a fantastic acupuncturist, masseur, cranial sacral therapist, um, Anybody who directly interacts with your central nervous system is going to get your system to feel more comfortable, calmer, quieter, more at peace, more uh, just present, more here. When The more your nervous system settles, the less reactive you're going to be, which means that you're going to listen out for the tinnitus less. It's going to bug you less. Basically, the short answer, get your nervous system to settle and get a sense of well-being in your body and it's going to make it very hard for tinnitus to carry on at the same level. That's the thing to aim for, well-being in the body. I don't care how you do it, <laughs> you lie in jacuzzis, have massages, have therapy, psychotherapy. Um, I do think cranial sacral therapy is brilliant for this because it drops people into stillness, um, which is incredibly helpful sunbathing, swimming, just gentle body-based well-being is going to really help. And the, the other thing I will say about this is that my life story is a testament to the fact that dreadful tinnitus can get better. I can't pretend any other way. You know, this is my story. Hello. <laughs> um, so there's nothing anybody can tell me um, that will change my mind, you know, that this is a possibility. If it's possible for me, then it's possible for other people. So getting your system to switch off, getting help and support, it, we can, to, in order to let go, we need support. You can't let go into nothing. With having some, someone there supporting you, you can let go into that, and that will help your nervous system desensitize and come out of red alert mode. So we talk about the theatre of horror, which you find in the forums, um, the naysayers, the people who say it won't get better. And we don't see people coming back to write about what you mm. have seen with many, many of your clients, yeah. not just yourself, with this fade of tinnitus. Yeah. Um, why do people not go back and write about it? It's a great question. Um, when you get better, you move on. <laughs> So 
if you have a, a, a difficult situation, that's something about human nature. Once the problem's gone, we kind of go on to the next part of our lives. Um, so all the millions of people out there who used to have tinnitus are not going to be going, hi, good morning, my name's John, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Do you know, I used to have tinnitus 15 years ago. They'll talk about things that are relevant now. Especially as it's so mind-based. Um, tinnitus has so much to do with the brain and the mind, and research is finding more and more of these connections. So I think somebody possibly with, who used to have tinnitus or has faded tinnitus does not want to focus on that for that reason. I don't, I don't agree. I think anybody who's got over it is quite happy about tinnitus. They're not bothered about it. It's not a predator anymore. It's no threat to them. So they become, you know, I think I'm quite typical. So if it comes back for me, um, I'm not bothered in the slightest. I know it'll go again. It's like, for me, it's a healthometer. It's a very healthy friend for me. So there are millions of people who used to have tinnitus and who've moved on. Tinnitus forums are very good for finding out that you're not the only person in the world, but they're dreadful for getting stuck in negative, traumatic, terrifying experiences of other people. Um, you know, be careful when you join a group of people who are all struggling and suffering with no way out and who have a mindset that says, this is never gonna go there's nothing we can do about it because that's very, a very powerful way of getting even more stuck. You know, I think it's really much more healthy to work on yourself, to get support and to maybe um, find people who used to have it. That's a really good, um, a really good thing to orient to.